when you're working with any type of backend application, like an API or even a front end back end, as I like to call it, which is kind of like a web API almost where it could be either showing you the front end or incorporating into the back end, you know, like a database connection or something like that. You're going to always need, unless your application is fully stateless, you're going to always need some type of connection to a database. And there are several ways that we can do this, but one way that I do like in Go is using GoRM, as I call it. I think some people call it GORM. There's a few different ways that you can, you know, essentially pronounce it. But if we, uh, if we just go to Google here really quick and we look up GoRM, you're going to see it is the ORM library for Golang. Now, if you're not familiar with a ORM, let's just go ahead and look that up really quick too. Programming ORM. Okay, so as you can see, there are several different ORMs. I've primarily worked with SQL Alchemy, that's a Python ORM and GoRM. But if we go ahead and we look at this up really quick, we can see that it's object relational mapping, which essentially means if we just look that up here again really quick, we'll go ahead and we'll zoom in. ORM in computer science is a programming technique for converting data between incompatible type systems using object-oriented programming languages. In short, you can create tables and columns and put data into a database using programming. So that's exactly what we're doing with GoRM. Now to be able to do this, we of course need a database. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use Azure and I'm gonna spin up Azure databases for MySQL servers. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use MySQL. I'm going to click create database and I'm going to use a flexible server, which is the best for production workloads. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scroll down here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to create a new resource group and I'm going to call it YouTube. Next, I'm going to put a server name in here and I'm going to call it YouTube testing. Next, I'm gonna make sure that I use a development workload. The reason why is because this is in production, so I don't need to use a production database, so it's gonna essentially just save me a little bit of money. All right, you can see that our database is gonna be one virtual core, two gigs of RAM, 20 gigs of storage, and 360 IOPS. I'm go ahead and I'm gonna scroll down. My SQL version, I'll just leave it 5.7, that's fine. No preference on the availability zone. And then I'll go ahead and I'll put in my credentials here. So for my username, I'm gonna say Mike. And then for my password, I'm just going to use one of my standard passwords here. I'm going to go to networking. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in my current IP address. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click review and create. And now this is going to go through and this is going to create our database. So it's going to take a few minutes here. And then when we're back, we'll be able to dive into our Go code. All right. So now I'm at VS code here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to define my main package. So I'll say package main. And then I'm going to define my imports. Now, the first import that we're going to need because this is going to be a web API is net HTTP. Okay. Next, we're going to definitely need the gorm.io slash driver slash MySQL. Because again, we're using MySQL here. Next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to define gorm dot io slash gorm for the package itself and then next what we're going to do is let's go ahead and define our database connection so i'll just call this database connection we'll have a few variables the first is dsn and that's going to equal my username at my password so i just need my password password one now of course if this was a production level environment, you would want to be passing in some type of key vault entry here. The reason why I'm not is because I'm trying to make it as pretty much not tied to a specific platform as much as possible. So for example, I could have my password in Azure key vault, but then this code would of course just be Azure specific. So I'm trying to make it, you know, just as open as I possibly can. That way you can go ahead and you can put in your specific key vault and where your secrets are and all that stuff for this portion right then at tcp and that connection is going to be my database so if i go ahead and i 
move back to Azure here. I can see this is my server and I can pop that server in here and then over port 3306 and then my database name. Now, of course, we are not going to have a database name just yet, but we're just going to go ahead and we're going to call this go test. We're going to create that database. Don't worry. And then I'll set up my char set here to be UTF eight and before okay so now let's actually define our struct so our struct is going to be the data that we're passing into our database so we're gonna just do the type here and we'll say go test for example model struct and the first bit here is I'm gonna say I don't know name and then we'll give that as a string and then we'll say year and a string. So we're going to be passing in a name and a year into our database. Okay, next let's go ahead and actually set up our function that's going to create something inside of the database. So we'll go ahead and we'll say func go database create. We'll pass in our HTTP response writer. Okay, and as you can see, it's an interface used by an HTTP handler to construct an HTTP response back to our code. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up another pointer here to HTTP requests. And as you can see, it represents an HTTP request received by a server or to be sent by a client, which is what we're doing. We're sending this request. Okay, so let's define our values of our type here. So we'll say go test model equals our struct. So go test model and then we'll go ahead and we'll put in our values here. So we'll say name, and I'll just say Mike, and then we'll say year, and it is still 2021 at the time of this recording. Okay, so now we need our connection to the database itself, like the ability to create and update and delete and everything in our database. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to define another variable here. I'm going to call it DB. It actually has two values. So I'm just going to put that value as blank and I'm going to do go RM open my SQL open DSN which is again our database, of course, which we define on line 12 there. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put our network address pointer to gorm.config. And that's gonna be to call upon our configuration for gorm. This is gonna essentially right here, give us the ability to do this. Check this out on line 26 here. DB dot, and then we could do something like create. And then within create, we can have our network address pointer to go test model. So this config here on line 13 gives us the ability to pull in our database configuration into GoRM. That way we can use it to create databases and update them, etc. All right, let's set up some error handling here. So if er equals db create song explore dot error and then error doesn't equal nil we'll go ahead and we'll log that as fatal and we'll pass in our error here Oop, I typed in song explorer I meant to type in go test model that was another one that I was playing around with <laughs> cool okay so we are, well, let's kind of just take a pause here for a second and take a look at this function before we move on. We're defining our values for our struct. We're then creating those values inside of our database. And then we are then doing some error handling here. So if the creation fails or the error doesn't equal nil, we get that log output. And then next we're going to do some JSON goodness here because we need to be able to convert whatever we're getting these values from to what the database can read. So we're gonna say JSON new encoder. That's gonna be W because remember, that's our writer here. Dot encode. 
go test model. Okay, and then we can just go ahead and we can give us some print to the terminal here. So we can say FMT print LN fields added. And we'll go ahead and we'll just do go test model. Okay, so we now have our creation here. And then what we can do is we can now set up our main function. So func main and then let's go ahead and add in our HTTP handle func. Okay, and then we'll do create stuff because we're very technical here. And then we'll say go database create. So what this is saying is at this path, so when I open up a URL, right, let's say I do localhost over some port, which we're gonna define in a second, slash create stuff, it's gonna call upon this function right here and this function is going to create our value inside of the database so now let's go ahead and do log fatal http listen and serve over port 8080 and then we'll just go ahead and pass in nil here okay now before we continue we have to connect to our database why do we have to connect to our database because we need to create the database itself remember because we define it here and we also need to create the table so let's go ahead and do that so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the MySQL terminal here and I'm gonna put my host and then I'm gonna put my user I'm gonna pass in my password right and now we are in my SQL so now let's go ahead and create our database so we'll say create database go test models okay and then we'll say create table go test models and then we're, we'll pass in our columns so we'll say name and we'll just give our char 100 and then we'll say year and again var char 100 and then we'll go ahead and we'll close that off. Oops, sorry, we gotta do use go test models. And we'll go ahead and we'll run our table creation. Okay, so we are officially created here and we're good to go to run our code. So we'll do go mod init to initialize our modules here for our code. So we'll go ahead and we'll name this go test. Okay, and as we can see, we now have our go mod here. So let's go ahead and go get our modules. So go get, and then go get again over here. Okay, we'll do one more, go get. And then I'm gonna actually take out that Jinzu slash go RM org looks like it was messing something up there and it actually wasn't needed uh, interesting that go added that for me automatically so let's go ahead and run go run main dot go actually before we do that we need to change our database right here to go test model okay and our code is now running and we have over port 8080 here. So let's go ahead and open this up. Create stuff. Okay, and as we can see, our output is right here. If I open back up the code here, we can see that the fields were in fact added to our database. And that's how you can get started using GoRM today with Golang. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you again next time.